Okay, very good morning to you. Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to Good Morning Annabelle Friday edition. How are you? It's a weekend. We don't even know which day is the weekend. We started celebrating one week before Christmas. And then this week is the climax of the celebrations. Every day is celebration. People are wedding on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, just any day. You name it. I attended one yesterday. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. It's time for, for us to celebrate after a hard year's work. Welcome. Well, we'll take a break now, and when we come back, uh, we'll bring you a press review. Okay, welcome again. Johnny me this morning is a Monday as an ago for us to look at the front pages of the Nigerian newspapers. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning. Happy New Year. Same here. Hope you had a good celebration. Yeah, I You're did. keeping a straight face, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay, welcome. Well, um, in the absence of the website news, let's um, go ahead and look at um, the front pages of the newspaper today. The first paper we have today is the Daily Sun, and then beside the name template is Forest. EFCC raised and got Boa. Others says exercise continues. And then the banner headline there says suspect education certificate. Federal government may extend clamp down to Kenyan Ugandan universities. Dons, experts ask government to be such lights on local institutions. Mm -hmm. Because why are you busy chasing the one outside? You don't know what's going on inside. Down here, play two killings. Gombe, governor, advises against reprisal. We will not neglect border communities. Lawmaker, you are advising against reprisal. You have not even stopped, I mean, started uh, advising against uh, the attack itself. You are advising against reprisal. Okay, but yes, our governor is still for peace as uh, Fubara visits. visits. A reverse crisis, a here withdraws suit challenging Amahuele, others. We have got that, name, got that name right. Okay. Uh, FDI, FDI's uh, Nigeria's financial asset deep by $870 million. Mm -hmm. Why Supreme Court should validate my election? Uh, Mutwang. Uh, says it was nullified without basis. Okay, that's talking about uh, the Kano State Governor. Police photographer died in Saokoto, Deputy Governor's convoy road crash. Very unfortunate. Mifuru, Umahi, Anim, Onu, others, back leadership award in Ebony. Uh huh. Okay, maritime workers threatened to ground port January 9. Everywhere. Problems. Okay. We can receive 50 billion naira for capital projects in FCT. Mm -hmm. Okay, punch newspaper. The banner headline there. APC promises heavy defeat as Article I's 2027 presentation. This must be yesterday's paper. Didn't I see this story yesterday? Okay. And let's move on to another paper. Vanguard newspaper, viral video opera over impostors exposed in army recruitment exercise. Mm. Okay, it didn't just start today, I'm sure. It's just that this one leaked. Our forest pressure worsens as manufactured goods import, imports, uh, manufactured goods imports rise 39% to 3.96 trillion naira. I don't know what this year is going to look like if we are hearing this kind of story in the first week of the first month of the new year 2024. The nation's newspaper. Banner headline there, eh? 37 billion naira probe. Ex-minister guess EFCC's 72 hour uh, ultimatum. With a rider there, anti-graph agency rejects three weeks extension request by Sadia Umar Farouk. Okay, and up here I have this story. 
uh, federal government extends yearly tie fair uh, rebate till Sunday. Uphold my mandate, play to Governor Edges Supreme Court. I appeal court judgment unfair. Apex court hearing for Tuesday, Tuesday, excuse me. Okay, court, court, court. That's all coming from here. And what's the next paper? The Guardian newspaper. EFCC pros NI, NSIPA beneficiaries in, in, lake, in the alleged forest allocations abuse. EFCC pros NI, NSIPA beneficiaries in legal, uh, in alleged forest allocation abuse. Okay, that's the headline coming from the Guardian newspaper. But other stories coming from there said, Naira battles fresh threats falls below 1,200 Naira per dollar at the parallel market. A wake-up call to African leaders. Ma'am, predicts challenging business year, urges federal government to prioritize manufacturing. Fubara Ali withdraws suit against 25 rivers law lawmakers. Okay, my election nullified without basis. Play to governor. Okay, was it from, from play to states? Okay, great economic management scene. Next, tells to Nubu because we don't know where we are headed here economically. Group blends myself for underdevelopment in Ogoni. And then Navy decries a report on complicity in oil theft. Okay, I think that's um, all coming from this paper now. Let's um, start talking before we look at the rest of the papers. Yeah, getting back to where we started, which is the Daily Sun. And then um, looking at the banner headline there, the certificate saga that uh, trended uh, this week coming from uh, uh, Bene and uh, which other country was that? Was it Togo or whatever? Now, they say they're sending it to Kenya and Uganda universities. Why the dons are calling for it? For them to beam such light on the national universities that something like that may be going on without you knowing. Imande? Yes. You know, um, coming to that, um, apart from the irregularities that we have in these um, African, um, African universities, the, most of the government um, has taken the um, has taken the steps to stop these irregularities, and some of these universities has been sanctioned. Some we are even announced that um, they will be closed down, and uh, because they have not met up with the. NUC um, terms and conditions being provided for these universities. So, for Nigeria to extend it to other countries, I believe that it will be a very good idea, but at least they should start from home. They should start from, I, I remember when in the past administration, when some universities were, were closed down for some time, then at the end of the day, it was um, provided that um, they have to meet up with some targets that should be provided by the school to the NUC before it can be approved and this issuance of certificate. And it affects the people, the students that are in that institution. So the government should ensure that the education system in Africa is in order. That's all I have to say for now. Okay, thank you very much. Play two killings, Gombe. Governor advises against reprisal. I know that um, when this killing started on the 24th night, um, uh, by the way, I had they gave a notice that they were coming. They came, kill people in their hundreds, and now it's peeling over two thousands. And uh, they kept coming. They come, finish their deals, and then they leave warning that we are coming tomorrow. They still come tomorrow, finish uh, killing people, not uh, just finish farming or doing any other thing. They came to do it, finish killing people, and then they will leave another warning that we are still coming tomorrow. The last, latest one that happened. Uh, was the one they said that they came and met a three-year-old boy 
and I asked him to come and show us where all these people, the remaining people are hiding. Innocently, the boy went and showed them, and then they wiped them off. This is how it has continued from 24th uh, evening to date. And now a governor is asking them, um, asking the people that are being killed, or the people that are left, you know, <laughs> have not been killed, not severely left because they're, they're, they're still coming. Those people that have not been killed, the governor is asking them not to uh, defend themselves because when you say reprisal attack, it's like um, you just that the Nigeria is coming, the whole security apparatus in Nigeria is coming to, you know, attack these uh, people that are killing people, killing Nigerians. No, they are asking the indigenous, the leftover, the ones that have not been killed, not to defend themselves. Okay, Imandi. So how, how do you see this advice coming from the governor? Do they know who is coming? Why are they protecting them? You don't want, you don't want the killers to be killed, but you want the villagers to be killed. You know, before this killing started, first of all, there was an incident of um, a bomb incident in the same state whereby, and at the end of the day, the, mili the military were accused that they were the ones responsible for that. And it was during one of the um, Muslim festival, the night. So even the imam, they condemned it. Now, Few weeks now, see what we are seeing in the same state. The previous administration promised us security, that they would tackle bandits, that they would tackle insecurity. They stayed eight years, they didn't do anything. Now, this new administration gave the, the new um, promise on, on securing the lives and properties of Nigerians more than the previous administration. At the end of the day, they failed. Even the governor of the, of, of the state is, even, is, is not even considerate on the matter. What he's after is, his, is to maintain his position as the governor because he's still facing some court um, issues now as the state governor. So, you see, coming to this, this advice that they should not um, defend themselves is a very wrong advice. He should act by providing security in Plateau State, by providing security to all these villagers, by providing security to the citizens residing because they pay their tax. And this tax is part of what they use in this secure, to secure the lives and properties, which is the primary, um, primary assignment of the executive arm of government. And it is part of the constitution, not only being the constitution, it is also part of the oath that they take on the day of their swearing in. So giving this advice is not even the right thing. As a governor of the state, you move with your own security. You move with, with your security, the security in their hundreds, protecting yourself, protecting your family, protecting your office, including those in the executive arm, um, including the commissioners and the special advisors, they move around with their security. Now, the common man that you promise to secure his or her life, that you promise to secure his business, that you promise to secure his property, you are not given that um, security. Is that no nearby police station? All the police station in the villages, don't they have any police station or even local vigilante that can help? to provide this security. At the end of the day, they are saying that they should not defend themselves. What do you want? Is it, is it when the whole people in that particular area must have been wiped off that you have to come up into action? So Mr. Governor, the governor of the Plateau State have to do something. In fact, it should be a conjunction with the federal government to declare state um, of emergency on security in Plateau State. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, um, zero on what's going on in uh, Bayelsa. Bayelsa governor sues for peace. Uh, governor sue for peace as Fubara uh, visits a river crisis. He here withdraws suits challenging all these other people that defected to APC. And then uh, what are we um, seeing happening in River State? Is it, is it the I mean, the piece of a graveyard, or is there a mutual understanding now between the father and the son? I believe that um, there is, but, um, but I believe that there is peace now. But this peace, I think it came with some offers and some agreements. 
because His Excellency the President came in into the matter. And um, for the governor to have um, withdrawn the suit against those PDP members, or PDP lawmakers rather, that moved to APC. You know, the new electoral act stated that once you move from a, polit from a particular political party that brought you into an elective office to another political party, that definitely you are stepping down and losing that particular office. That is one of the um, electoral act law amended in the year 2022 and signed by the president, the former president, Muhammad Buhari. So I believe that um, that was the reason why the governor have had to bring in the lawsuit. Now at the end of the day, he's withdrawing. That's to show you that there is an agreement and there is peace. And you know that um, this inc incident started from the former governor. You know, most times this godfather is in, I don't know, is only in Nigeria that when a governor wants to leave office, the governor would like to impose another person on the people. And at the end of the day, after imposing the person on the people, we we'll still take from the back door to take, um, to take the resources for the state and, and, and is being paid at the end of the day. So coming to that days, I believe that that was the major issue that came up between um, Governor Wiki and um, Governor Sim Fubara. And now we believe that we pray that this peace will be a lasting one because of the intervention of the president and they signed an, a peace agreement of which they've started implementing. Even though some people are saying that, um, that um, the, the agreement that even the governor was forced, that Fubara was forced to sign the peace agreement. But that doesn't mean once there is peace in a particular society, in the society, there will be progress. So if there is no peace in River State, there will be no progress. Let's take, let's take a look at the damages caused. So like the House of Assembly that was destroyed. Now they can't even, the lawmakers can't even hold their sitting. They can't hold their plenary session in that House of Assembly. River State is rich. They can build one in one Yes, place. they can. I'm, I'm trying to say that for now, they can. And for now, they cannot do anything in that particular House of Assembly session, which, as you may, now the Speaker have to provide a place for, a, for the plenary session. So we believe that this peace that, is be, that has come in River State will be a lasting one. Let it not be a political peace that okay. after some months or weeks, the, the problem will come up again. Okay. And uh, from Vanguard, we saw the story that forest pressure worsens as manufactured crews imports rise 39% to 3.96 trillion naira. How are we going to manage this economy this year? Let's imagine it with some, uh, the other story that where somebody was calling for an economic team. How can you just be walking like a blind man? You know, be moving anywhere I hit my head, I hit it without guidance. I think uh, who, was that? who was asking for that? Uh, create economic management team, next, uh, sustainable. Okay? Yes. So know, let's join these two stories together. First of all, the president had to create this economic team before now. Now, it's a, a shame that even ordinary toothpick, we import toothpick. We import toothpick from outside the country into this country. Come on to speak. Even whereas we have many resources that we can use to produce goods and services. Just as the former governor of Anambra State, Mr. Pitobi mentioned, that this that one of the problem, one of the solutions to the problem of Nigeria is to move from consumption to production. And the reason is that we import virtually everything that we consume in this country. 
So the rate of, the, of importation will definitely increase. That is to start with that. And secondly, the, the institution that are seeing this, um, the, the institution that are seeing the importation of all these goods and services into this country, they are the ones causing all these things. In the sense that the importation rate keeps increasing. Now, why is it increasing? Is it the dollar rate? They will not tell us. Is it that? Is it? Are, are they? Are, are you trying to say that these goods are not are, are, are not supposed to be imported into the country? Is it, is it that they will not give us the analysis that brings up this increase or high rate of um, importation into the country? And at the end of the day, the final consumer bears it because the, 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 the wholesaler that imports these goods will have to like put in more money to recover the profit in this um, that he or she gets from this importation and it keeps increasing now the president had to set up an economic team and economic team or economic advisors that will that will advise him both in the exchange rate that's in the financial aspect and in the production aspect just as they promised us that um, before christmas that um, there will be that um, the protocol refinery will start functioning to date, it has not started functioning. So these are the things that, that, that after looking at it, find out that this country, that our leaders are not helping matters at all. If a whole, if as a whole, as, a, as Nigeria as we are, that we still export our crude oil and then import them back and they sell it back to us and we then buy at a high rate. Now, come on to speak that is made with wood. Mm -hmm. We cannot produce in this country. We have to import them. That means there will be no much progress. There will be no much. So things will keep increasing because even the people that we are buying those products for will take it as their own advantage. And at the end of the day, you find out that that, that is one of the reasons why we see, why we, why we see high cost of um, um, goods and services in this country. So the problem is from our leaders. Creating this economy is where after doing them, will the president and other members of the executive arm, will they listen, will they adhere, will they, um, will they implement it? Or at the end of the day, they will just say, okay, let us do it. And at the end of the day, we'll just give us an empty promise that will not come to pass. Just as they promised us that um, Portacourt Refinery will start functioning before Christmas, as they promised that Dangote Refinery will start functioning at the end of the day, it has now, Dangote Refinery has now been extended to this 2024. What are they deceiving? Let them move into action to make sure that things go well, just as, they prom as one of their campaign promises, which they are yet to fulfill. All right. Okay, let's look at, take this story uh, coming from the National newspaper. Uh, 37 billion naira probe, ex minister guest EFCC 72, uh, ultimatum. Um, uh, we know that um, she was summoned and then uh, she refused to go. And then, anti graft agency rejects three weeks extension uh, request by Sadia Opera. But Sadia was saying that uh, she is sick, and that was why she hasn't uh, appeared, as they said. And then, some of us are asking, is this. Um, uh, it, does it also mean that uh, even those, the appointees cannot answer to uh, any kind of um, a dealings that went on when they were there? Otherwise, why this impunity of you are invited by EFCC and you refuse to go? You know, even coming to that, uh, to first of all, we make law in this country and we be on in one of the human rights we are told that um, every Nigerian citizen, rich or poor, is equal before the law. But unfortunately, the rich are not equal before the law. The rich are above the law. If it's a common man that has this issue, the next thing that we hear is that EFC, that, the, that the individual has been arrested by EFCC. Now, EFCC is given an invitation 
what I am suggesting is that this should not be the news. The news should be that EFCC has arrested um, the former minister for finance and at the end of the day that this we had investiga investigations that, in that investigations we had made and these we had the findings that we, that we found out concerning that concerning this or concerning um, the irregularities that uh, happened in her in her eight years in office these are the things that ESCC should tell us I'm not coming to give us um, the news at first they brought out the news that um, including the former president Buhari was also um, that they were to be probed concerning these 37 billion naira um, issues that was mismanaged in um, during their office so this ESCC they have to go into action just as the way that they are going around with that of um, um, the former CBN governor and his cases and these are the things that we should understand I don't know why it is like that before you know it at the end of the day um, um, IJ, before you know what's happening in, in few weeks time you won't hear this news again mm -hmm. it will be swept under the carpet <laughs> let us check from let us check from outset the people that EFCC has invited especially the bourgeoisie especially, especially the one of the people that are part of the policy makers in this country especially those that are part of the executive arm of the government because um, um, the, this former minister she's, uh, she's she was part of the executive arm of the government during okay. the former um, in the past administration before you know it, it will be swept under the carpet so the, the ESC is just trying to make news let them give us one or two persons or even up to five persons that they have arrested on the ba on, on the basic or on the ground of irregularities or mismanagement of public funds that they arrested no they were arrested yes and prosecution yes yeah, and prosecution the end product is the end point is the prosecution not the arrest okay well, uh, for want of time, let's just uh, relate uh, what uh, we have in the remaining two papers here. Uh, what is the Daily Trust? The banner headline there says, Households, one month after federal government's intervention, households, SMEs, still buy cooking gas above 1,100 naira per kg. Families, businesses lament, multinationals should pay attention to domestic supply not export. Crude oil stability key <laughs> to gas production. Sufficiency. Experts are saying this. It sounds funny. EFCC widens probe on forest allocations such as Dangote's office. Mm. Subscribers kick as telecom seek federal government's note to increase tariffs. <laughs> this 2024. I jump up past you. We are talking about increase in fuel, increase in everything. Now is increased subscribers. Uh, what do you call it? Um, telecoms are also increasing their tariffs. Okay, Tinubu appoints executive director for MPA and the master. And then missing trust radio tower, civil defense files to refund 6.5 million naira. The last paper for this morning is the Tribune. EFC systems that go to help us. We have seen that story. And then Ondo PDP appoints acting chairman, says Adam suspension remains. I'm beginning to wonder what's going on with PDP. Are they dying off or what? Okay, those are the questions for uh, the begging for answers, and the answer may not really come very soon. Thank you very much for coming today. Imandi Ezanago, a public affairs analyst. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Thank you for having me. Okay, my name is C. Um, and we thank you for joining us for Press Review this week. A fresh package will come your way next week, Monday. God bless you.